Welcome. In front of me is a Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 Lite and today I'll show you how you can go to the setup process of this device. When you boot it up for the very first time you should be presented with the screen that you can see right over here and all you need to do is just tap on this button to whatever language it's showing you there just tap on it and here you can actually select the language that you want to use so I'll choose English. From there, moving on to the next page, uh, we can connect to mobile network by inserting a SIM card. This is completely optional and you can just go to the next page if you don't want to insert one at all. And then moving on, we have uh, for your review, which is uh, not really for our review. This is for uh, saving as of Samsung because, you know, a user license agreement. So I just select that you agree to it and go to the next page. Now we have permissions for Samsung apps and services. As you can see, Samsung wants a bunch of different uh, accesses to all kinds of different things like calendar, call logs, contacts, and so on. If you don't feel comfortable with some of them, you can uh, just completely remove permissions for that specific thing, like location. If that is a little bit creepy to you, why Samsung would need your location, that's completely understandable. From there, moving on to the next page, we have choose a Wi-Fi network. Now, I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. If this device is completely brand new, like straight out of the box, then you will not see a skip option because Samsung uh, really doesn't care that it's brand new. Uh, connect to network so we know uh, where you are and uh, who actually bought this device. Uh, that's basically as, as much as I can explain this. And if I'm incorrect, I don't care. Samsung doesn't give me a reason why they need network connection for a brand freaking new device. So I'm not gonna even try to look for it. So sorry if uh, I offended someone with this, but uh, either give me a reason why you need network connection or piss off with this. Now, once the device has been set up uh, first time and even though you reset it through settings or recovery mode, whatever the case may be, you will then have the skip option. which is what I'm gonna press. Anyway, moving on to the next page, we have copy apps and data. So here you can obviously import your apps. Um, I believe this is through Samsung account, but I honestly don't want to. So we'll select don't copy, which will set up the device as a new one without importing any kind of data. Then we have Google services like location scanning and sending user and diagnostic data. If you don't feel comfortable with some of them, you can obviously turn them off and then select more and accept. And this will take you to the next page which allows you to set up a screen lock. And we have two different methods of protecting our device. One would be face recognition and the other one is pin pattern or password. Now, if you're planning to use face recognition, you will also be required to set up pin pattern or password. And the reason for that is, as much as I can assume, is probably if someone beats the living heck out of you or maybe you uh, bust your face somehow or just something changes, break your nose or whatever, you would probably lose access to your device. Thus, it leaves a option for pin pattern and password uh, as a additional way of unlocking the device. And obviously, if you don't want to protect your device at all, you can select skip and skip anyway. Next, we have uh, get recommended apps. So we have a bunch of Samsung uh, apps. Most of them have their own like Google equivalent because this is still running Android. Uh, but one thing that I'll say is uh, what Samsung doesn't have as an alternative is calculator for some stupid reason. So if you're planning to disable all these, I would at least recommend keeping calculator because if you're going to use it, at least you have it. And voice recording also might not be there from Google. So again, if you're planning to use some of them or will need to have some of them, then um, keep them on and uh, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna go to the next page, keeping th these two only. And here we have Samsung account. Now we can log in with an account if you have one or if you want to. This will give you access to the uh, Samsung store, which is basically the equivalent of a Play Store, and uh, also give you access to uh, some of their like. Mm, Samsung exclusive applications. I don't remember how they're called, uh, but they do have an app store like some of the 
strictly Samsung device applications that you can download with this account. But if you don't really care for that and you just want the typical Android experience without care much in the world about like exclusivity of Samsung, then you can skip this and just sign in later on with the Google account. Now they do have the audacity to bring this uh, skip out on all this and other devices have a little bit of a longer list. Uh, here you get three options, all this, like three options is such a freaking huge amount. And uh, add, adding salt to injury, Samsung Cloud has an equivalent of Google Cloud. Uh, Find My Mobile has an equivalent of Find My Device, again from Google. And Galaxy Store has the entirety uh, or competition and entirety of a Play Store, which every Android comes with because it's the default store. This isn't. So yeah. Um, yeah, skip because it's not like they're offering anything special here. Now, this would basically conclude the setup. So once we press finished, it's going to load our home screen and apps and wallpaper. There we go apps there we go and that's it so if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching <laughs>